Uncle Mike and Auntie Verna. About 12 years ago or so, we showed up on their doorstep with four kids, uh, five, four, two, and a newborn, and said, we're going to plant a church in, in Vancouver. Can we stay at your house for a few days till we figure it out? <laughs> Something like that. So thank you for letting us uh, crash at your place, and it's good to be here today, and, and I'm glad to, to come and, and hopefully just share from my heart what God's doing in my life, and, and maybe it'll be an encouragement to, to you guys. Um, the title of the sermon is called The Healing Round, The Healing Round, and um, yeah, about a dozen years ago, I, I planted a church. It was my life's work. Uh, uh, yeah, 13 years of pastoral experience leading into this church plant, and it failed. Uh, several key relationships along the way failed. My health failed. My plan for housing in Vancouver, quite understandably, failed. Um, <clears throat> my neighborhood-oriented philosophy of ministry, guess what? <laughs> failed. Uh, and add a gut punch to all my failure, <clears throat> my good friends, Kirk, Darren, and Rod, all died within a year of each other. So I began to think that if you hung out with me for a little while, you might fail at living. <laughs> a lot of failure. Looks like the lights just failed there. Um, and so I feel like I've become a bit of an expert at failing. Failing makes me grouchy. It makes me depressed. When things don't work out like I'd hoped. Um, maybe you can relate. Maybe your epic failures are even greater than mine. It's possible. And today, maybe you're here and you are completely robbed of your joy. It's possible. Is there a way forward? <clears throat> yes, there is a way forward through failure. If you and I can get into the healing round, we have a shot, I think, at recovering our joy. But before I talk about the healing round... I need to talk about how to get into it. And so the very first thing I want to mention today is to stop. Um, is to stop. This is the hardest part for most of us. I've discovered that I'm usually one of two things. I'm either distracted or I'm either driven. Which one are you, I wonder? Distracted or driven. For, for distracted, uh, it's, it's Twitter and Insta and Facebook and TikTok and sports and news and entertainment and advertising and no dead air, no dead downtime, always grabbed by something. You've ever seen that movie Up? There's a dog in the movie Up, and he's, he's relating well here to the, to the guy here, and all of a sudden, squirrel? You know, like he's having a special moment with his owner or whatever. And, and then squirrel. And uh, last night we were watching this movie. What, what was that movie called? A Dog's Journey. A Dog's Journey. Have you seen that movie? It's, it's, you have. It's a good one. I cried like four times. Um, and anyway, it's all about these dogs, right? And they're, they're like... They, they love their, their master and their, 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 their dogs, but then all of a sudden it's like, oh, poo, or oh, this, oh, that, oh, this, and they're just completely distracted. I feel like that's our world today for a lot of us. We're always distracted. We, we, we have everything pulling for our attention, and so it actually becomes impossible for us to stop and block everything out because we're constantly distracted. It's a major problem that we have in this world. And maybe you're here and you're like, oh, I'm not, I'm not like one of those young people. I don't have that Instagram and that Facebooks and all that other stuff. 
But I would say maybe you have fallen into the other problem, right? Because we either get distracted or, or we're totally driven. And we become a slave to our to-do list. And we, got, we have laser focus and we're always working towards some goal. And I would suggest that um, that is equally, uh, makes it equally impossible for you to stop when you're distracted or you're driven. And if you're in the driven category uh, and you're a slave to your do- to-do list, to-do list, your anthem is from that country music band, Alabama, right? I'm in a hurry to get things done. Oh, I rush and rush until life's no fun. All I got to do is live and die, but I'm in a hurry and I don't know why. To enter into the healing round, you must fully stop. Stop being distracted. Stop being driven forward for all of your tasks. The writer of the book of Proverbs says this. He says, joyful are those who listen for me, watching for me daily at the gates. He's talking about watching and listening for wisdom. And in order to watch and to listen for something that will bring healing to your soul, you have to stop everything else. That's how you enter into the healing round. And so it's impossible to experience healing if you're constantly distracted or if you're always driven. So at first, you must stop. And so now, what is the healing round? What is the healing round? It is to appreciate beauty, to practice gratitude, and to be creative. And so here's my story. This sermon is for me. (laughs) If you can benefit from it, great. But this sermon is really for me. I am one who is very easily distracted, but I also have the unique ability to be very, very, you know, um, driven. And so I I fail at this on two fronts. And so that was me um, for, for, for probably many years. And... Uh, you know, we got this boatload of failure. I'm distracted. I'm driven. And so I just decided that we live in downtown Vancouver, right near the seawall. How many have been to the seawall in downtown Vancouver? It's beautiful, right? There's all sorts of trails We're all along the water. We live right, right next to the seawall. And I started going out to the seawall bench each morning. And I started with the goal of watching and listening. And the goal was, if there's beauty out there, I want to be able to watch it and listen to it. And so I just went and sat still at a bench for the first time in my life. (laughs) I was not plowing through Bible reading programs. I was not making sure that I had all my prayer lists spoken back to God. I just sat still. I set those things aside to watch and to listen. And I'll be honest, for a long time, nothing happened. I was like, what am I doing? I should be doing something. You know, looking. I finally threw my watch away. I don't wear a watch anymore. (laughs) Okay, quiet time is done. It doesn't work that way, right? Like, so... Uh, So I set all this stuff aside to just watch and listen for beauty. Life had made it hard, though, for me to see beauty. I couldn't see beauty because of the difficulties that I had been experiencing. But then it happened. I was sitting there. Sunrise comes up. I'm struck by the beauty of a sunrise. And I just watch it. And then the, another day, I, I, I notice the flight of birds. And I just, I just am captivated by the flight of birds. And then another day, I'm just sitting there. And, and a runner comes running by. And, and she looks me in the eyes and smiles and says, good morning, and keeps going. And 
And, and, and there was beauty in that connection, in that human connection. And then one, one day I see the, the ripple of the water, uh, the wind on the water, and I'm captivated by, by that beauty. And next thing you know, I'm sitting there and I'm just watching and listening and taking in all of this beauty. And then I'm appreciating, I'm profoundly appreciating the beauty that is around me. Maybe for, I'm sure I did it in my past life, my past life, but not like this. Not like this. And what happened is I had begun to slip into the healing round. And I began to chew on beauty and savor it and be amazed at it. Think about nothing else. Now you may be here and you're like, uh, is that a good use of time? I mean, we're Christians, right? We're supposed to be winning the loss and reading the Bible and memorizing scripture and going to church, all this stuff. I would tell you, Yes, it's a good use of time. I would tell you that it may even save your life type of use of time. It's why the psalmist says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. He's looking at his created body and he's saying, I'm amazing. This is beautiful. It's why the apostle Paul says, you are God's handiwork. It's why the writer of Genesis tells us that God created everything good and very good. He wants us to sit in that creation and say, wow, that's beautiful. It's why in the Song of Songs, the writer says of his love, you are altogether beautiful, my darling, and in you there is no flaw. He's captivated by the beauty of his bride. To be captivated by beauty wherever we find it is God's good idea. It's a major part of the heavenly plan for your life to thrive and to flourish on this earth. And so I stopped and I began to savor beauty. And what happened next? Let me ask you that question. What does your heart tell you to do when you come to appreciate beauty? Tell me. What does your heart naturally tell you to do? Give thanks. Give thanks. Yes. It's natural. It just happens. <clears throat> you don't have to manufacture it. You're amazed at beauty and you're like, wow, this is amazing. Thank you. It happens automatically. <clears throat> Gratitude is the natural f- outflow when we appreciate beauty. And so all I say to you, my friends, is just go with it. Like savor the beauty, appreciate it, and then just go with the gratitude wherever it takes you. And if it's a human being who's causing this gratitude in you, express the gratitude to that human being. If it's God You know, if God is part of your story, if you're a Christian person, then express gratitude to God. Psalm 139, 14, right? It says, I will praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. That's the outflow, right? Life can totally be falling apart at the seams for you. But in the quietness of a moment, you can be captivated by something truly beautiful. And you can let that beauty wash over you until it naturally overflows into gratitude. And there is healing in that. Miston's been having a hard time. That's my wife, by the way. Her name's Miston. Um, It seems like like we kind of fail together (laughs) and we succeed together. So she's been having a hard time lately. And uh, last Sunday, uh, she's just crying. She's a bit of, she's a waterhead naturally, but she's really crying. Sunday morning, we're supposed to be going to church. 
She's, she's not happy, miserable, in the dark. And I, I say to her, Mr., just go find a bench somewhere and watch and listen for beauty. Just go. Just go find a bench. Um, I'll take the kids to church. Don't worry about it. Just, just go. And so she did. And so she, here she is. She's, she, she goes to this place called Trout Lake. And um, this, this bench is supposed to be overlooking the lake, but, but clearly no one has taken care of, the, of the, 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 the park because the bushes have grown up. So here she is just sitting there at the, uh, at the bench and just, just trying to watch and to listen for beauty. And then all of a sudden, somebody comes up behind her and taps her on the shoulder and says, excuse me, could you, could you just move? Like, who does that? What is that? So Mrs. sort of bends around and looks, and she says, oh, I'm just here to visit my old friend. And her old friend is her dearly departed friend, Irma McInnes, warrior queen of Tignish. And Miston's curiosity is piqued. And so Miston says, could you tell me, could you tell me about Irma? And this friend who dearly loves Irma just spends five minutes with Miston telling her all of the wonderful qualities of this woman who fought pancreatic cancer with courage and still, in spite of her suffering, she, she, she pressed on in, in good works and in good love for this one friend of hers who will never forget her and visits her every Sunday morning on the bench. You know what that was? That was a beautiful moment wasn't it? It was a beautiful moment. And, and there it is, Miston watching and listening for beauty, and there it came. Healing. Healing. She savored it. She was thankful for it, but that's not where the healing round stops, right? We appreciate the beauty, then we practice gratitude, and then what? then we become creative. We become creative. And that also, my friends, is a natural outflow. It is a natural outflow. And so that's what Miston did. She went home. She started writing about this. She took pictures of it. She wants to mem remember it. She wants to share it creatively with others. I'm sharing it creatively with you right now, right? So you see, you see the healing round? She was stopped, she watches, she listens, she's struck by beauty, she appreciates the beauty. The beauty transforms itself into gratitude, which transforms itself into creativity. And not only is she healed and me healed, but maybe some of you here today are by the very story. It's the healing round. Let me just say this. To be creative is to be like God. To be made in the image of God means that you and me are innately endowed with creativity. The healing round is truly healing because it makes us be who we were intended to be. We're not made for distraction. We're not made to be driven to accomplish tasks like sled dogs and pack animals. A train functions best when it's on its tracks. And in the same way, a human functions best when they are living in the gentle embrace of the healing round. Appreciate beauty. Practice gratitude. Be creative. That's the healing round. And that's what will help you when you fail. It will help you retain joy and to flourish. And then it spreads, right? It spreads. Appreciation of beauty spreads. Gratitude spreads. Creativity spreads. And as a result, healing spreads to other people. You can fail at so much and still be okay if you live your life in the healing round. Life is hard. I recognize 
that there are moments <laughs> where appreciating beauty seems impossible. This last week, I went to the dentist, and I just did a little, like a little experiment sitting in the dentist chair, and I said, okay, I'm going to try to appreciate beauty here in the dentist chair. I couldn't do it. <laughs> I, I really tried. <laughs> You know, I got the trauma of when I was 12 and the, the dentist put a, um, a mold, you know, they put a mold in your mouth and then he forgot. And so then they had to like, like tear my face off to get it out. So I had the, you know, the trauma of dentistry. Is anyone a dentist here? Sorry. <laughs> I'm sure you're better than my experience. And then this one, you know, there's three dentists rooms and the back dentist room is like the room that's been forgotten there's no artwork there it's a it's a brick brick um you know mason brick they don't even put drywall on it's mason brick and then just slap some paint on it and and uh, and, and 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 looking up in the chair the uh the uh ceiling tiles are cracked and there's like dirt in the corners and I'm like what am I doing here this is not beauty I can't do it God I can't I just can't appreciate it sometimes life is like being in a dentist chair and you can't appreciate you just can't appreciate beauty okay that that's normal that's okay but what I what I want to say is sometimes like if you're committed to watching and listening for beauty even when you can't see and hear it at the moment beauty will come to you eventually God will send it. It will come to you. And if you're waiting for it, if you're listening, if you're watching, it will touch you. And the healing will begin.